Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Operation Freedom Briefings. The goal of these briefings and my weekly radio show, Operation Freedom, is to provide you information the bought off lamestream fake media will never present, never touch. You can join us every Sunday from 2 to 5 Eastern. Stream the show live. It's free. DaveJanda.com. Just hit the little icon in the upper right hand corner, the Listen Live button. Join us. Join our Freedom family. In addition, we upload a tremendous amount of public free information on DaveJanda.com almost every day of the week. In addition, we also have a subscription service, 30 cents a day, biggest bang for the buck in the internet, where we provide other shows, the Insider Insight Show that I host, a video format show. This week, we have Kevin Schiff, former CIA uh, officer and, and now whistleblower, speaking about the deep state, the shadow government, and what's really going on behind the curtain. These are the type of guests we get on a regular basis. So we have our Insider Insight Show, our Department of Advanced Research Show. We, we have our podcasts always available for our subscribers on, on the, both the radio show as well as the Insider Insight Show. And we have our healthcare symposium where we talk about healthcare policy and we talk about ways that you can cut your healthcare insurance costs by up to 70%. All available on DaveJanda.com. Take a look. You can take a little spin through, a little introduction on the free side, on the subscription side. Hope you'll join our Freedom family. What I'd like to attack today, really attack, is what's really going on with the money laundering situation in, in campaigns. And in particular, let's look at Trump and let's look at Hillary Clinton. This is something the mainstream fake media will not do. Look, a lot of folks got very, very upset this past week. My email box was inundated with folks saying, oh, the Cohen plea, this is devastating. Trump's going to get impeached. This is what the bought off, this is what the mainstream media is saying. Understand something. The bought off lamestream fake media is providing you propaganda. It's a psyops. It has nothing to do with the facts and the truth. Let's look at some of the conclusions of the entire plea deal when it came to Trump's lawyer, Cohen, or whatever the heck you want to call him. Number one, when you look at the plea deal, there is nothing that has anything to do with Russia, collusion with Russia, or alteration of the election results that led to Donald Trump becoming president of the United States. Fact. Number two, what did Cohen plead to? He pled to five counts of personal income tax evasion. That has nothing to do with Trump. One count of a false statement made for a personal loan, not a loan to the Trump campaign. And the third thing he, he, he pled to were two non-disclosure agreements that he arranged that he, that he stated that he pled were actually campaign contributions, even though the money for these two non-disclosure agreements to two women, Karen McDougal and good old Stormy, even though the money never came from the campaign. And one of the women, Karen McDougal, never was paid. What? I, I know. Rachel Maddow, Anderson Cooper, none of them are talking about it. But it's true. And, and you know, if we're so concerned about money getting paid by politicians to, I don't know, porn stars, hookers, playboy bunnies, whatever it is, how about this one? Remember last year? Do you remember, do you remember last year? Uh, the, the lamestream fake media loved to just cover this one up. Uh, remember last year that it was... It was recorded that members of Congress doled out $15 million of taxpayer money in hush money for illicit sexual misconduct. Did anybody get thrown out of Congress for that? Did anybody get impeached? Did anybody even talk about it? Oh, no. But because Michael Cohen took a $131,000 home equity loan out for himself, and then that money ended up in a porn star's pocket that didn't come through the campaign, that's the mainstream media talking about, oh, he needs to be impeached. Oh, this is, this is horrendous. So what's interesting is in speaking to individuals that are well-versed in election law, and campaign finance law, because it's a real murky area. I have not come across one expert that believes 
that this is a slam dunk conviction of Cohen, let alone Trump, Cohen, when it comes to campaign finance law violations. Even Cohen himself, I mean, when he did this plea deal the other day, his lawyer, Lanny Davis, and we'll get to him in a minute, Lanny Davis had him plead to something that many people believe is not even a crime, to arrange two non-disclosure agreements, and then to link it that it's related to a campaign when the money never came out of the Trump campaign. And in fact, Molly Hemingway from The Federalist recently wrote, a few months ago, Cohen, Trump's attorney, said the payments had nothing to do with the campaign, claiming, quote, people are mistaking this for a thing about the campaign. This is Cohen saying this. He went on, what I did defensively for my personal client Trump and my friend Trump is what attorneys do for their high-profile clients. I would have done it in 2006. I would have done it in 2011. I truly care about President Trump and the family, more than just as an employee and an attorney, end quote. As Ms. Hemingway points out, now he claims he made these payments in concert with Trump for the, quote, principal purpose of influencing an election. This is directly in contradistinction to what he said before, folks. As his attorney, Lanny Davis, put that forward. Perhaps, perhaps he has evidence to support this claim but he has yet to present it. And perhaps he can convince others that Trump wasn't far more interested in the purposes of protecting his marriage, his family, his reputation, his children, and his businesses. Federal Election Commission experts disagree whether such reimbursed payments would meet the standard for a campaign law violation. For what it's worth, th there are conflicting precedents in FEC law about what it would mean if contributions such as Cohen's were part of a pattern that predated the campaign. This could mean that if Trump ever paid for a non-disclosure agreement prior to the campaign, it would truly hump, help Trump's case. Now, Davis, his, his attorney, Lanny Davis, who's part of the Clinton, Clinton crime family, I had some tangential dealings with Davis and his goon squad back in the early 90s when I had unearthed the problems in Hillary Care, and they weren't happy about it. To say that Lanny Davis is scum is not being fair to pawn scum. My feelings. Lanny Davis had Cohen, had Cohen admit in the plea agreement to essentially two campaign law violations that were not violations. And then the next day, Lanny Davis had Michael Cohen set up a GoFundMe page for $500,000 to pay for his legal fees. Okay, now look. A lawyer makes his client plead to something that isn't a crime, and then the next day has him set up a fund to pay the same attorney? I mean, you want to talk about money laundering? Uh, the apple doesn't fall far from the Clinton tree with Lanny Davis on this one from the Clinton tree, right? A, li a, little, a little more... Background. So, so Lanny Davis is is partner and co-founder of the law firm Davis Goldberg and Galper. By the way, I did a little research. Do you know that that law firm, the one Lanny Davis co-founded, you know, Mister Innocent, co-founded and and is a partner in. They're a registered, active, act operative word active active foreign agent. For Ukrainian oligarch, oligarch Dmitry Fertok, who just happens to be close friends and allies and business partners with who? Oh, Vladimir Putin. You wonder where Lanny's getting paid before the GoFundMe page kicks in? Oh, you think it might have something to do with this? And Lanny is not consistent with what he's saying. I, I, on CNN... A couple months ago, he was saying, oh, oh, oh this Cohen guy, uh, he has evidence that Trump knew about the Trump Tower meeting before and after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But just recently, he was on CNN, 
And he said, quote, Cohen doesn't have evidence on Trump knowing about the Trump Tower meeting with the Russians beforehand or after. Then, Lanny said something about the fake Russian dossier, saying it was false, it was fake. That it had his client, Cohen, Trump's attorney, in Prague, getting information, money, getting something, and bringing it back to Trump, when Cohen was never in Prague, and Lanny confirms that. The dossier was false. And Lanny went on. He said, my client was named 13 times in that dossier, and all 13 times it was false. False. So, Lanny now has blown apart the dossier issue. But, you know, one of the huge problems about this entire issue, when it comes down to Cohen, prosec potential prosecution of Cohen, is, is really the, the equal application of the law. See, if you're going to try to hold Trump's feet to the fire on these two non-disclosure agreements, one of which one of the women got paid, Stormy, one of which Karen McDougal didn't get paid, the agreement was ripped up before she got paid. If you're going to go after Trump, then equal application of the law, we need to look at somebody else. And you think, I'm thinking, well, Hillary, yeah, okay, Hillary, but how about Obama? What? from Matt Margolis. Obama was accused of offering hush money to who? Jeremiah Wright, his preacher. And no one cared. So let's review. A payment to silence someone for making potentially damaging statements could constitute a campaign contribution according to some, underline some, experts. There's clearly a significant amount of subjectivity here. But here's the thing. If everything went down as Cohen says it did, then why wasn't Obama held to the same standard? How about he's a globalist and uh, bought off lamestream fake media, is armed with a globalist syndicate, and they were protecting their own little puppet Obama? Yeah, that's probably it, but let's go on. That's right. Barack Obama also offered an individual hush money, quote, for the principal purpose of influencing the election, end quote, but you probably never heard about it. It was to silence his former pastor, Jeremiah Wright. Wright's inflammatory anti-American rhetoric caused Obama significant headaches uh, during his first presidential campaign, and he tried to contain the damage to protect his chances of winning the White House. Edward Klein broke the story in the New York Post on May 13, 2012, the same year Obama was re-elected, that Obama's team tried to buy Wright's silence during the 2008 campaign. According to Wright, he was offered $150,000 through an Obama intermediary, one of Obama's closest friends, and Obama himself tried to persuade Wright to keep quiet. Margolis concludes, Sadly, Obama offering hush money to Wright is probably the least serious thing he did to, quote, influence an election, end quote. There are many examples of obstruction of justice, manipulating intelligence, and outright lying to the American public with the sole purpose of protecting Obama's chances of re-election in 2012 or to influence the 2014 midterms or, frankly, folks, the 2016 election. When the Obama campaign was fined $375,000 by the FEC for concealing donations, no one called for impeachment. That's right, no one of the globalists called for impeachment. But Lanny Davis has surfaced yet again this past week. Lanny can't keep the story straight. Remember, he was one of the behind-the-scenes advisors to CNN about how Cohen had all the goods on Trump. Oh, about the meeting. Oh, about the payoffs. Oh, about the hacking. From Zero Hedge. Yeah, I know, not MSNBC, CNN, or even Fox for that matter. In stunning reversal, Michael Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis, backpedals on Trump-Russia claims. Lanny Davis, the attorney for Michael Cohen, has massively backpedaled on, quote, confidence assertions, end quote, that Cohen would share information with investigators that President Trump knew of Russian effort, efforts to undermine Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton, a lifelong friend of Lanny Davis. The Washington Post reported that Davis said in an interview that he is, quote, no longer certain about claims he made to reporters on background and on the record in recent weeks about what Cohen knows about Trump's awareness of the Russian efforts, end quote. Hey, Rachel Maddow didn't say, how about Morning Joe? Oh, Anderson Cooper. No, I know. Quote, <laughs> listen to Lanny here. You, you wonder, Lanny must have gotten a tap on the shoulder. Lanny, Lanny. 
here's what we have on you. And I bet you it has something to do with the fact that myself and a number of other folks uh, over a week ago were, were blotting out the fact that Lanny is an active foreign agent, as is his law firm, for a Ukrainian oligarch. You want, as I said, you want to, oh, it's friends with Vladimir Putin. You want to talk about Russian interference? You want to talk about Russian collusion? Uh, Lanny, look in the mirror. Here's what Lanny now is saying. Quote, this is a guy who, let me tell you, um, is not shy about being in your face, about being arrogant, being smug, and being, frankly, nasty. Here's what he's now saying. Quote, I should have been more clear, including with you, that I could not independently confirm what happened, end quote, Davis said, adding perhaps the most difficult four words for an attorney, especially him, to utter, quote, ready for this? I, re quote, I regret my error, end quote. <laughs> wow. In the past week, when asked directly by CNN's Anderson Cooper whether there was information that Trump knew about his son's meeting with Russian lawyer Natalia Velenskaya beforehand, Davis said, quote, no, there's not. On Saturday, President Trump tweeted about Davis's stunning 180-degree switch on the Cohen claims, writing, quote, Michael Cohen's attorney failed to clarify the record saying his client does not know if President Trump knew about the Trump Tower meeting, out of which came nothing. The answer is that I did not know about the meeting. Just another phony story by the fake news media, end quote. Davis also walked back an idea he widely circulated after Cohen's guilty plea that Trump knew about Russian hacking of Democratic emails in advance, which he has mentioned numerous times in recent interviews, quote, repeatedly touting his client's potential value to Mueller, end quote. Quote, I believe that Mr. Cohen has direct knowledge that would be of interest to Mr. Mueller. Four days later, Lanny Davis has taken it all back. Quote, asked how confident he was that Trump knew about the hacking before it became public, Davis said, quote, I am not sure. Whoa, Lanny, I am not sure. I just am not sure. Quote, I was giving an instinct. He was like giving an instinct. Uh, in other words, I was lying my ass off. I, quote, I was giving an instinct that he might have something to say of interest to the special counsel, end quote, about the hacking issue. Davis said in retrospect, quote, I am just not sure, end quote. And they conclude the Zero Hedge article with the following. We wonder how many people donated to Cohen's GoFundMe page that I spoke of earlier, assuming he had the goods. Let's talk about the goods. Let's talk about the goods when it comes to campaign finance. This past week on Operation Freedom, go to DaveJanda.com, the radio show on my Sunday show. I had investigative journalist Tracy Beans. She's fantastic. Tracy actually talked about some money laundering that occurred, but not on Trump's camp, on Hillary's camp. Let's set it up. Hillary had a victory fund, <laughs> yeah, not so victory fund, which was only to be used for expenses after her victory in the presidential campaign. Yeah, the fireworks, the horses, the carriages, the coronation event. And people could donate unlimited amounts of money to that. There were no caps like there are for an election fund. She had an election fund, the Hillary for America fund. Well, here is what Tracy Beans uncovered. A few days ago, a lawsuit was filed with the FEC that alleges that the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Rodham, Rodham Clinton's Joint Fundraising Committee, the Hillary Victory Fund, that's the after party fund, and the Hillary for America Fund, that's the election fund, circumvented federal contribution limits and earmarking restrictions to what? Launder money. Equal application of the law. We're talking about $131,000 that came from a home equity loan that Michael Cohen took out with Trump's name not on it that he paid the porn star Stormy Daniels. Money never was transferred from the campaign fund. When Cohen took that money from Stormy Daniels, paid money to Stormy Daniels, he submitted a reimbursement to Trump Entertainment, the corporation, for legal fees. That's where he was reimbursed for the money that he had taken out of his home equity loan to pay Stormy. The money for Karen, for Karen McDougal was never paid. That agreement was ripped up. 
Meanwhile, meanwhile, equal application of the law, meanwhile, when we have true money laundering with the Clinton Foundation, what, what, what's happening? What's happening is not so much. So how did it work with Hillary? Here's how it worked. The Hillary Victory Fund, you know, as much money as you can donate to help Hillary, right? As much money as you want. The, the Hillary Victory Fund would transfer funds to state Democratic parties. And then the state parties on the same day, or in some cases the day after, would wire that money to the DNC in Washington, who would then use the money by wiring it to the Hillary Election Fund, where there are limited donations. In that way, the Hillary Election Fund could skirt federal restrictions by taking the money folks donated above the federal limit to the after-party fund, launder it through the states and the DNC, and into Hillary's campaign. You want campaign finance violations? You got it. Many people were very upset, were very upset, that Michael Cohen pled. I get it. And they were upset because the bought-off lamestream fake media was running a psyops on you and our entire country. One woman never got paid. One woman did get paid. It was money through a home equity loan from the attorney. The same attorney who stated that, quote, people are mistaking this for a, for a thing about the campaign. What I did defensively for my personal client, my friend, is what attorneys do for their high-profile clients. I have done it in 2006. I would have done it in 2011. I truly care about President Trump and the family more than just his employee and an attorney, end quote. And then somehow, Michael Cohen got hooked up with part of the Clinton crime family, Lanny Davis, who made some outrageous statements to begin with about the guilt of President Trump and impeachment. And now, he's completely walked it back. Remember, Lanny Davis, Lanny Davis, an active foreign registered agent of a Ukrainian oligarch tied to Vladimir Putin. That is called Russian collusion. Folks, I hope you'll join us at DaveJanda.com. Join us for our radio show every Sunday, 2 to 5 Eastern. Stream it live. Join us for the public content on our website, DaveJanda.com. Please join us as a subscriber. 30 cents a day, biggest bang for the buck in the internet. Sign up for a month, nine, nine bucks. You can cancel after a month. Not sure why you would, but you can. I assure you, the information you get, such as in today's report, you'll never see or hear or read or experience through the bought-off lamestream fake me. Until next time, this is Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail.